Welcome to another video on layers. Right now, we're actually gonna go through the lesson four and create some of the layer components in this video. We're not gonna do any gradient fills or anything right now in this particular video. We're just gonna work with layers and how to get all these layers onto one canvas, which is very important because all of these images came from different sources. So let's go ahead and I'm not following the book exactly, but we are going to follow, we, I am doing some of the exercises out of turn. So right now we have our starting point for our layers. We see the postage, Hawaii, flower, pineapple background. So right now I'm gonna try to introduce that Andoranda chair image into this canvas. And how do we do it? Well, the way I do it is I go to File and I click Open. I navigate to my Lesson 4 folders or wherever your images happens to be. And I'm gonna take the beach image. See this beach? And I'm gonna say Open. The picture opens in the new tab. You see, there's my old tab, which one I'm trying to work with. And there's my new tab. Well, that doesn't look right. I need this picture to be in this tab. Well, in this particular case, I'm going to go Window, Arrange, and I'm going to say Two Up. So they're side by side. Then I'm going to take Layer 2, and I'm going to drag it to my pineapple. Now, this layer was copied over to my start image and I can close it. I'm going to do the same thing with the flower, but with the flower, I'm going to select, you know, select flower or Hawaii, whichever layer you, wherever you want it to, to be placed. And I'm going to say file and I'm going to place embedded. And I'm going to select flower two and click place. Notice this is slightly different way of inserting the image by doing a placement. And notice it gives you a lot more variations, like for instance, flower size. I can rearrange it right now. I can rotate it right now, right? It gives me a few more options. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it. I'm gonna deal with that a little bit later. And notice it brings it into my artwork as a smart object, which allows it to have smart filters applied to it. Notice I hover over this little icon and it says smart object thumbnail. What is a smart object? A smart object is basically a link between this flower file and this image. If anybody opens up this flower file, separately and modifies the color, the smart object is going to it was going to transfer it over to Photoshop. But we're not going to worry about this right now. Right now we're just talking about getting images onto one canvas, onto one display board so we can work with them. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer, which is this beach chair, and I'm going to place it right above my pineapple. Oh, you know what? I think I need to place it. I think it's good enough. Let me go ahead and see, unclutter what I'm looking at. All right, there's my picture. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go free transform. I'm going to transform my picture a little bit lower, make it a little smaller. I'm going to give it a little edge, just like in in the actual work. There we go. Make it a little smaller. There we go. That looks right to me. Right? I'm just eyeing, I, eyeing it, right? Just basically eyeing the picture, seeing how, it's, how it looks. Uh, maybe a little bigger. There we go. There we go. So now I'm gonna 
bring in the flower. Notice how the flower, flower is above this particular image. Now I'm going to bring in the postage and I'm going to go ahead. Oops, sorry, grab the flower. I'm going to grab the postage and I'm going to move it down a little. Now the postage is very dark. I'm going to go ahead and drop the opacity of the postage layer. Notice on the right hand side on the layers, it says opacity. I can left click on the word opacity and move it to the left or to the right, or I can come in and click on the down arrow and move the slider to opacity. There we go. That looks good. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the background layer and I'm going to apply a filter to this particular layer. And the filter, I guess went ahead and uh, turned off all these other layers so we can see what we're doing. The filter is going to be creating a sky. I'm going to render, I'm going to use a render filter to create a sky. And the sky colors are dependent on the foreground color and the background color. So the foreground color is going to be, let's make it a nice light blue, right? And the background color, let's find out how it's going to look with a light red sky. So blue and red background, right? I'm going to go ahead and go filter and I'm going to go render and I'm going to render clouds. So now it uses the blue and the red to render the clouds. Eh, don't like the way that looks. Let me go ahead and select a different color. Let's see, how about this yellow maybe? And I'm gonna say filter, render, and I'm gonna say clouds. Yeah. Not really, not feeling it. So let me go ahead and do a dark blue clouds and see how that feels. There we go. Filter, render, clouds. I like it. Nice dark colored blue skies, very Caribbean looking. Perfect, put the pineapple on top. Hey, we are almost there. The next thing we're going to do is, let me see what we're going to do next. I'm thumbing through the book and we're going to add a border around the particular beach image. And we're going to do that by selecting the beach image, going to layers and applying a stroke. You guys see where the layer stroke is? Layer mask, layer object, layer style. Where's my layer style? Give me one sec. Trying to find it. Notice me, I'm hunting and pecking. Huh, layer style, there it is. I passed it. And we're gonna apply a stroke, which is basically an outline of the image. Notice it's a special effect that got applied. So it's a stroke effect and we're gonna select how many pixels. Notice right now the stroke effects is black. Let's go ahead and select a white stroke effect. And there is our stroke effect. How many pixels is the stroke effect going to be? That's up to you. You can follow the book or you can select your own pixel. and then click OK. We have a nice stroke. There is the flower. There's the second flower. Let's go ahead and move this flower down to the right. And then there's the Hawaii. And then there's the postage. So where are, what are we missing? We're missing, notice how the pineapple kind of looks bland. See this? 
let's go ahead and copy the pineapple layer, layer one time. To do a copy of the layer, we can right click and we can copy the layer. Let's see where it says copy layer. Do we see where it says copy layer? Delete layer, copy, mm, layer, copy, copy, let's see, rename, copy layer. Well, the way I usually copy the layer is I hold down the Alt key and I move the pineapple up or down and that automatically copies the layer. I usually don't right click and say duplicate layer. That's what it's duplicate layer. It's not copy, it's duplicate layer. See when I actually say the words, I can find what we're looking for. It's not copy, it's duplicate the layer. So I usually duplicate the layer by holding down the Alt key, left clicking and dragging up or down to duplicate the layer. Now I'm going to apply a filter to this particular layer. And what the type of filter I'm going to apply to that is going to be an overlay. This overlay is going to go on top of this pineapple. And how I'm going to apply that is you see this, it says normal right here under the layers. I'm going to go ahead and do all the different. This is normal. This is dissolve and the color will be different. And I'm going to go ahead and click through each one of them. And you see the differences with the pineapple. This is color burn, linear burn, darker colors. I'm looking for screen color dodge. Different, different fil layer filters, different layer uh, modes that we can apply. So what I'm looking for is an overlay. When I do an overlay, it takes two images and overlays one image with the other, giving it a much richer color. Let's go ahead and hide the pineapple below it and just leave the overlay. Look what's going to happen. It, the image, this pineapple overlay is almost transparent. Looks kind of cool, looks like an ice sculpture, doesn't it? Some of the ways you can use the overlay feature. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do, we resized the picture already, and now we are going to go ahead and select the Hawaii. The actual, notice Hawaii is not a text, Hawaii, is actually an image that was converted from text. So you can't just go and double click on it and change the spelling of Hawaii because it's no longer an, uh, a text. It's actually rasterized, rasterized text. So make, basically making it an image. So how do we get a gradient into this Hawaii? So right click and select pixels. Now we can use a gradient tool And notice right now on my gradient tool, select blue and dark blue. And there is our gradient. Notice I'm placing the tech, I'm, I'm left clicking and dragging where the gradient's gonna be, watch. The further you draw, you drag, the bigger the gradient. Let me demonstrate on the blank, on the blank sheet. Let me go ahead and bring a, a, a transparent layer I'm going to go edit and I'm going to go, uh, actually, I'm not going to go edit. I'm just going to go deselect. There's the blank layer two. See that? It's on top. I'm going to apply a gradient. Notice a gradient has been applied to the entire sheet. The more I drag, the larger the gradient. Look at the nice transition. Now I'm going to drag a little bit left click and drag a little bit, notice how sharp and abrupt the gradient is gonna be. See that? If you drag very little, you almost have a crisp line.
And this is how you apply the gradients. You want a lot of gradient like this, or you want a little gradient like that. Okay, let me go ahead and delete the layer by dragging it to the trash can. Let's go back and reselect Hawaii, select pixels. Let's select the colors they want us to use, which is yellow. And the background color is, I don't know, yellow and white. Actually, this is, let's go a little bit more yellow. There we go, yellow and white for Hawaii. There we go. And now let's go ahead and do a gradient. Actually, let's do it the opposite way. You know, I don't like this yellow. I want to use the yellow from the pineapple. How do I do that? Select the background color. Don't select the color on the color palette. Go ahead and use your eyedropper to select the yellow off the pineapple. I'm going to use this yellow right here. And now I'm going to redo the gradient and see how that works. There we go. And there's my gradient. Now this video is getting really long, but the, the next thing I want to do is I want to apply some kind of a style. I'm going to apply a special effect. And the special effect that I'm going to try to apply is going to be a stroke again. So remember we applied a special effect by going into uh, layer, special effects, blah, 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 but there's a quicker way of doing it. See this FX on the bottom right corner, right by the time clock? Click it and select stroke. If you don't see stroke, like I do now, you can select anything and then select stroke. See that? And just select this layer. And this is going to be a stroke layer and we're gonna to wanna to make it a green layer. So I'm gonna make it green layer like this. So there's my green layer for the stroke. There's my color. How big is the stroke gonna be? This is an internal stroke. I'm going to do, this is an inside stroke. I'm gonna do an external outside stroke. The difference is, this is the outside stroke. Look at, look at the Hawaii. See, the stroke is outside. The internal stroke, the stroke on the inside. I'm going to do the outside stroke because I like it better. That's why. And the next thing I'm going to apply is I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to do a small shadow. I'm going to do a drop shadow on this. So, let me find out where the shadows are. Anybody see an in, inner shadow? Inner shadow or glow? Let me apply, let's see what we can do with inner shadow. Do we want an inner shadow? Mm, I don't want an inner shadow, actually. Don't want that. What I want is, Blind, manipulate where the shadow goes. Let me do uh, inner glow or glow. Let me do a drop shadow. That's what I was looking for. I'm looking for the drop shadow. Look at all these inner shadows that I created. Let me go ahead and delete some of these. There's my Hawaii going back to the stroke. Kind of deleted it by accident, which is okay. We can redo it. Give a color, green color, good. There's my stroke and it's gonna be an outer. And now I'm gonna also apply a drop shadow. So the drop shadow is, this indicates where the shadow is going to be. This is the opacity of the shower, of the shadow. And this is the distance from the text. The reason I'm making the numbers large so you guys can see what's happening. See this box represents the shadow and there's my shadow from Hawaii. I'm going to situate the sun is to the left, shining down to the right and dropping the shadow. I'm moving this little angle 
to simulate where I want the shadow to be. There we go. And now I'm going to soften the shadow by moving down the opacity. And now I'm going to reduce the distance. And the spread. Is it going to be a sharp shadow or is it going to be a fuzzy shadow? And the size of the shadow. See that? All of these things control our shadow. I know all these multiple things. And when I'm ready, I can click OK. This is the contour of the shadow, different ways the shadow is going to appear. You can click on some of them and see the different shadows that you can make. I'm going to click OK. There's my shadow. The next thing is left is to create a text. There's my postage. I'm going to go ahead and use my text tool. And I'm going to type right on the bottom. And what I'm going to type is, let me spell this correctly. Iceland Paradise. Oh my god, this thing is huge. I had a very big uh, uh, text point. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce that down to 12 is too, too little. Let's have about 24 just right. I like it. Align it center. I'm looking for that. There you go. Perfect center. So now I'm going to select the color, which is going to be that same green that I used for Hawaii. There we go. And I'm going to take this drop shadow and I'm going to copy it to this Iceland paradise. I'm going to use the Alt key, drag the drop shadow. And notice that same drop shadow with the same settings got copied over to Island paradise. Look how weird it looks though. Let me go ahead and do bold and let me select a different font. I'm just trying to select a font that I, I kind of like, which I really don't know. I'm just trying to select. You know what? I'm going to select this font and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Iceland Paradise. You know, it's a little, the color is a little off. So I'm going to change the color to a little bit lighter. There we go. And I'm going to do the same color to this particular Hawaii. See this uh, on Hawaii, the stroke? If you want to change the stroke, double click, uh, left click on the stroke, opens up the color. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be a little lighter. There we go. And that basically is all the rest of the chapter. They're going to have you put this border around the image. And it's a nice border that they do. It's just I use that border so, so little that I will need, actually need to look at a few things to create that border. On page 102, it's going to say flatten the image. Please, if you want to score or you want to grade, do not, do not flatten the image. So the next thing we're going to do is add a border. And by adding a border, we're going to select, we're going to do auto select or just select everything by control A. Let me go ahead and do control A. We selected all the layers and now we're going to create a border. So select and we're going to go ahead and go to modify and we're going to say borders. Now we're going to say how many pixels we're going to do. 
the border is going to be 10 pixels. And after we select the borders, we click OK. And now notice the 10 pixel border is appearing. Let's go ahead and make select and do borders and do a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. Borders, let's go ahead and do a 20 pixel border. Notice a 20 pixel border appears. Now we're going to do edit and we're going to do a fill. Notice I selected the postage stamp right here. Edit because it's a top layer and I'm going to do a fill. The fill is going to be, I'm going to make a fill yellow fill. I don't know, color, background color. I'm going to be using this color for the border, not the white border. And click OK. And there is my yellow fill for the color. Control D to deselect, and there's my nice little yellow fill for the border of this particular color. And that all, that, that's all there is to this particular assignment. Make sure you save your work. Do not flatten your layers. If you, I don't see the layers, I cannot give you a grade. If you click on right click and say flatten image, and this is all I see, you will not be getting a grade. Control Z to unflatten it. I need to see these layers. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson on layers. Please, if you have any questions, go ahead and, uh, and post them in the how to section and or email me and I will respond with a different video with a follow up if needed. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.